Hey, Ed, how you doing, man? Good to see you, man. Uh, Eddie Trunk is a good man. I've known him for a long time. And where can we hear you now, Ed? What are your shows you got going on? Um, well, that metal show still. That metal show, of course. My favorite show on TV. You, Don Jameson, and of I, course, I, Jimmy Florentine. Of course, yeah. We're still having fun with that, and we still uh, do new shows. We just finished up a season. We got more coming up in uh, probably October, November. We'll shoot some more. So One of my biggest goals in show business is to get on that show. Come I mean, on. <laughs> I got to do that. Absolutely. You come on anytime you want. You know that. I got to tell you something, man. I've been in radio 30 years this year. And I'm insanely jealous of your setup right now. <laughs> I chopped my leg off. I can't get my phone assistant paid. I can't get somebody answering my phone uh, in 30 God, years in radio. God bless DirecTV, man. DirecTV oh, is, man. Well, this is TV and radio. They, they blessed me. And I uh, believe me, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky. They're the superstar here at DirecTV, but thank Amazing. you. Uh, and uh, you love the winery dogs. You came down here. For, Eddie hasn't come down for anything. He came down for the winery dogs. <laughs> well, you didn't invite me before. Oh, uh, you come down, you know. You I gotta, crashed this, man. I just came him. on their coattails. <laughs> You got an open invite. No, they're all friends of mine, and um, and I actually have, have known, uh, well, well, Mike, uh, their drummer, for, for a long, long time, Billy as well, and Richie as well. I, I mean, they're three of the most talented guys I've ever met, and they happen to be all friends. And, uh, you know, they'll, they'll tell you the story. I actually had a, a, a small hand in this band coming together. I was going to say, they're, they're a mini super group here, and I actually saw Billy... And uh, I'm sorry, what's your first name again? Mike. 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 Uh, <laughs> a one-time only thing, Richard Christie, when I was on the Stern Show, took me to B.B. King's and said, uh, these amazing musicians are getting together to cover The Who one day. Yeah. And God, that was fun, man. <laughs> it, it, and they did, like, you know, Quadrophenia, I think you did. They did all of Tommy and then uh, a whole just, bunch whatever. of whatever. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Anybody that's a drummer is, you know, warships at the altar of Portnoy. Right. Anybody that is a bass player, th that's the Jimi Hendrix of bass over there with Billy Sheehan. Oh, Mike Portnoy. Yeah, I know that name. <laughs> I know that name. <laughs> okay. And, and, if, and I think one of the... the and Richie. One of the most talented singers, guitarists, writers. I mean, Richie's got a huge history as a solo artist as well. I mean, I couldn't be happier that these guys are doing what they're doing. So how did this, get, how did this happen? What, what, what's, the, what's the origin? You probably guys? should interview the band. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Bands don't like to get interviewed. <laughs> I, mean, I don't want to bulldart well, what, the conversation. What but. did? Uh, how did it get together? What happened? It started. I, I, I was working with somebody else. Brought Billy on board for right. that. That thing never really took off. But me and Billy wanted to to do a power trio thing. And uh, right. And Eddie was the one that suggested, "Why don't you give Richie Conson a call?" Richie's like the ultimate guitar player, singer, writer, mm -hmm. and. He was the perfect missing element that we were missing. So I For mean, a trio, he could sing and play amazing guitar. Yeah, yeah. So that's great. Yeah. Can't beat that. And have that's you known each other a long time then? You know, have you known Richie a long time as well? Or you just... Billy and I have known each other for more than 20 years. Oh, okay. Yeah, a long time. And we were in a, a band together called Mr. Big. Right. And uh, Were you guys in that at the work. same time? Other work. What? Were you guys in Mr. Big yes. at the same... Okay. Yes. Yeah. So you did overlap? I mean, you, well, he you played joined bass and I played different... guitar, so we played together. I know, but I thought, but I thought you, you were like different times, like you early two thousands, late two thousands. Yeah, I came in the band. I replaced the original guitar player, and I came in the band in nineteen ninety nine, and I was there for four, three or four years. Yeah. And yeah. Now, um, Rich, you were in Poison. I was too. God, you, you don't have that look at all. It's funny. It's like, it's, yes. Well, when he's clean shaven with long hair, he's a real pretty boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long time ago. Yeah, but, but no, listen, that was that was the move back then. That was what was happening. Yeah. And how long were you with them for? Are you an original Poison guy? No, uh, I came in again like I did in Mr. Big. I replaced the original guitar player, and I was in the band for maybe about two or three years, long enough to do. One album and one tour cycle. Oh, uh, okay. And then I yeah. went back to making my own records. Those must have been hardcore tours, though. Poison was huge, right? That must then they were a big band, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they were really big. And I was 21 when I got the gig, so. Oh, it was God. Really cool. Talk about yeah. a dream. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. Did you meet those guys because you're from Reading? And they were no, local? I actually had ended up, before I was in the band, I ended up on the cover of Guitar World magazine uh, after I did my first record. And I was getting press as a guitar player. And it was a weird situation because I was signed to, to Interscope Records. And the guy that signed me worked with Poison when he was at Capitol. And I was having problems with Interscope with the direction. I wanted to make, really, I wanted to make an R&B record. They wanted me to make a rock record. So they ended up dropping me. But at the same time they dropped me, Brett Michaels was calling 
the A&R guy about me because he had seen me on the magazine cover and uh -huh. had read about me and actually liked the fact that I was from Pennsylvania. Yeah. I think right. that helped. Yeah. And so I ended up, you know, going and meeting okay. him and I got the, I got the gig. That's amazing. Yeah, John was telling me, uh, Billy, you got an amazing uh, background. You played with uh, Joe Satriani and, uh, and a bunch no, of. No, I never guys. played with Joe. Uh, Steve Vai was the guy. Oh, Vai, okay. Vi, Steve that's, Vi. A, that's a pretty the cool founding guy. father. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, so you having a, you guys seem like you're having a blast with this project. You having a good time? It's a riot. It's yeah. A riot. Uh, I've started a lot of bands uh, and uh, haven't <laughs> in a long time, but. Uh, Starting a new one now at this point is just really cool because business has changed a lot and God, we're all yeah. doing it for the right reasons. We just want to play, you know. We're not really well, motivated it is by anything else. It's great to see guys that are so good, uh, you know, singing and playing instruments in this time where, you know, you got the guys with a laptop computer selling 80,000 tickets in Germany. You're like, what are they doing? <laughs> you know? I don't know what they're instead doing. Of people, <laughs> so I mean, it's, I say, instead of people yelling out, play the guitar, kids are yelling out, Google something. <laughs> <laughs> Hit the space bar. <laughs> <laughs> The party songs. Something you, I don't know if you know this about Billy, but you know, I'm sure he's got amazing stories. Billy played in David Lee Roth's band. Oh, okay. Eat him and smile, right, Yankee right, right. Rose, all that's all eat Billy. Him and, eat him and smile. All that stuff. <laughs> that must have been fun going that out on tour a, with that maniac. The stories uh, of yeah. uh, our tour were legendary, <laughs> most of which I cannot repeat here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. That means they're good stories. Mike, <laughs> Mike, is it, uh, I mean, you're like, Progressive metal, right? Like that—that that was your your background, really. Well, yeah, dream. I mean, I spent 25 years in Dream Theater, and Dream Theater is progressive metal. Yeah, so kind of much different world from what I'm doing here with the Wine Yeah. Dogs, but so, do is, you prefer one way or the other? I mean, I'm just a music fan, man. I grew up listening to the classic stuff that this is based around, like the Who and Zeppelin, the Beatles. Yeah. That was where I started. Then I got into progressive stuff as I got older. Then went through a whole metal, you know, phase. I like everything, but this right here, what we're doing is like where where I started. This is my my roots is is in this kind of stuff. It must be amazing having you know Billy as your basis. I mean the Absolutely. rhythm is. is well, Absolutely. we we got this Unreal. weird ESP thing where Michael do this move, and I do the same exact thing, even though we never discussed it or planned it. We look at each other on stage like, how, how did you know I was gonna? How, how did you know? I, was gonna I mean, that's a great jazz musicians talk about that. Absolutely. Are you a fan of Ginger Baker? Right. Yeah, of course. Well, right. I mean, the early drummers were Keith Moon, John Bonham, Ginger Baker, Mitch Mitchell. Those were the early did guys. You, did you see? There's a documentary. I've been telling oh, you. Oh yeah. Do you see this? Beware, Mr. Baker. Beware, Mr. Baker. It's unbelievable. Yeah, awesome. And I'm a big music fan, but I have no musical ability, and I have to be. So I love listening to you guys because you talk a different language. And Jack Bruce and Ginger Baker in that documentary. It's so amazing how they talk about how each other. You know, they couldn't stand each other. Wanted to kill yeah. each other, but yeah. they just were amazing together. T to be honest, Cream, yeah. Cream is a bit of like the prototype for what this is yeah, about. Three guys, yeah. right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, they said that was kind of the birth of heavy metal cream in some ways. Yeah. But uh, Ginger Baker doesn't like heavy metal. He's like, he goes, he goes on the document, he goes, uh, birth of heavy metal, it should have been aborted. <laughs> 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 but uh, he's a maniac. But all these drummers, you're talking about Keith Moon, Bonham, they all have a unique a unique personality, totally. like like virtuoso madmen, which is so great. Absolutely. You know, like it really, it's cool. I mean, that's what I, Keith Moon for me is is one of my biggest heroes, not so much because of his drumming, but because of his personality. Yeah. Most people talk about like I saw, I wanted to be a musician when I saw the Beatles and Ed Sullivan. For me, it was when I saw the Kids Are All Right. And and I Tommy saw Tommy Smothers, Moon, and I and I couldn't <laughs> take my eyes off the drummer. The right. drummer was just all over the place, and I, that was my moment. That was my Ed Sullivan moment. I love I when like, they had to lip sync yeah. uh, in the Kids Are All Right at the beginning. And he's just mocking And he's just like, yeah, he's mocking <laughs> <laughs> He's mocking the whole thing. <laughs> uh, another great thing, Keith Moon, the Kids Are All Right, arguably the best rock documentary yeah, ever, absolutely. man. But, but uh, Keith Moon talked about PETA and political correctness. He used to do a thing where on the big bass drum, he put a fish a live fish in water. Whenever he hit it, the thing would like boom, 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 boom. <laughs> But uh, yeah, <laughs> but the way exactly what you said, the way he mocked the air guitar stuff yeah, and the I air drums right. was hilarious. So you guys on the road a lot, or uh... yeah, we just came back from South America and uh, we did our first show in New York. Uh, here on Saturday for BB right. Kings, our first show in the United States. BB Kings, and we actually flew uh, till we, well, it was what 16 hours of travel, pretty much, till we left the hotel, and we got here at seven in the morning to play yeah, a but, show that night. About 18 night. hours door to door. Wow! <laughs> and then we did a gig. I mean, these, uh, the album yeah, just yeah. came out last week, so they have us literally on a world tour. Winery within, dogs. Yeah. Within one week, we went from Japan to South America to North America, like 
Now, how, are, how are the sales for a record like this in this day and age? Because, you know... We entered the Billboard charts at number 27. Uh, so good. Listen, man. Blew our mind. Yeah, absolutely. Because nowadays, the way you sell records, I mean, obviously, you guys probably know in the music, but you got to get 12-year-olds to buy them, you know. That's how you make money. So you guys are probably adults like your music who appreciate it more. And it's, it's on an adult's to-do list. It's hard before they get around to buying a record. That's true. You know what I mean? So that's, that's an amazing thing. Thing. It yeah, means you got really a lot going on. By it. Uh, well, listen, uh, you sound amazing. You got any local gigs coming up? Playing in New Jersey on Wednesday, right? Uh, Jersey, Newton, New Wednesday. Jersey. Where you at? Some theater, uh, the Newton Theater. Newton Theater. Basically, we're just doing a few one-offs. I'd love to see week. you guys live. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but we're gonna uh, we're going to Europe September, full European tour, and then the full American tour starts in October, November. Oh, so, okay, all right. So we'll, we'll be it back out. around here in we the, the late fall. New York uh, gig in that time. I, I know it'd so. be hard, but if you could swing back in and do the show. If oh not, I'm gonna gosh. check with you guys. I, I'd love to come see you guys. Awesome, live, man. Anytime. Anytime. Yeah. When yeah. you guys, so being together for such a you know relatively short period of time, when you guys do a tour. Do you throw some covers in there from your your stuff that you wrote way back when, stuff that's yeah. not on we this album, the, or are you sticking to... We did the whole album. We have 14 songs that we wrote, so we do all of those, and then uh, we put a cover in, in the encore, and uh, we, we do a song that, that Billy and I used to play when we were in Mr. Big together, and uh, I have a little spot where I do a song by myself acoustically, so... Uh. It's, it's a great show, and, and uh, Billy does an amazing unaccompanied bass solo. Uh, that's, uh, you got to see that. It's Sounds great. Incredible. Yeah, so we're having a good time. Well, okay, so we got the uh, social media at Winery Dogs, the winery, stuff like that? Yep. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, all right, again, here's the album. The Winery Dogs, we just heard Elevate and Desire. And uh, check them out, Google them, and uh, see them as soon as you can. Thanks so much for doing the show, guys. Thanks for having thanks. us. I really appreciate Thank it. You. It's an honor. And uh, the great Eddie Trunk. Watch that metal show. Please check it out if you haven't. Eddie, thanks, thanks man. Good to see you. We got to have you on, man. I'm Whatever there. You want, you're I'm there. there. Uh, I, don't, you. I would never bump the Scorpion's drummer, but I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with the rest of the audio. Thanks, you.